Good evening. I'd like to call to order the regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District for October 26, 2017. Uh, Joe Carroll? Present. Aubrey Strauss? Present. Ben Viola? Here. Jason Greenleaf? Here. Rob McSorley? Present, sir. Nick Rico? Here. And I'm Charles Anderson. Um, approval of the minutes of the September 28th, 2017 regular meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Any corrections uh, to offer? One. I believe Flannapalooza needs an extra P, but that's up to you. Is that actually a word? It is. Is that actually a word? It was the name of the event. Yep. Page seven. Flannapalooza. Okay. Right now, it's only like two-thirds as exciting. You got it? I got it. Okay. An extra Z? P an extra P-A. Uh, Lana Palooza. Lana Palooza. Okay. Okay. I didn't catch it, but Nick did. Any other corrections? If not, all those in favor? None of one abstention. Uh, one, uh, was that one, oh, one abstention. Ben Viola He was not at that. Yeah. So six yeas and one one abstention. Um, before we go on to the superintendent's report, I guess I'd just like to acknowledge the uh, the largest group of uh, <laughs> citizens that we've seen in our meeting um, probably since the uh, late 70s, early 80s when we. <laughs> when we're holding public hearings on whether to build a sewer plant uh, and where it should go. Uh, and so just a brief point of explanation, since I think I know why everybody's here, um, that our meetings are televised, hence the speakers, so that folks at home can hear the discussion. And if uh, when I open the floor, which I will do, um, 
even though there's no agenda item for this for this discussion, but um, after the, when the superintendent touches on uh, the the progress reports for the problems with the odor at pump station one and two, which is Pine Point and Eastern Road pump stations, and also affects um, your neighborhood or neighborhoods. Um, I'll open the floor so that if folks want to make, um, if folks have comments they want to make, uh, we'll, we'll receive those there. And when you do that, just go to the podium. I'll acknowledge you, just raise your hand. Um, go to the podium, just state your name, and then just speak normally, but speak in proximity to the microphone so folks can hear what's being said. Uh, thank you. All right, and the next item on our agenda is the superintendent's operations report. David. Yeah, uh, thank you, Sam. Um, the monthly report of operations is, uh, is included in your report. Our average flow for the month was 1.14 million gallons per day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 96% BOD and 98% uh, TSS removal uh, with effluent concentrations of 12 and 7 milligrams per liter respectively. Um, one thing I did want to point out on the, the report is that although our flows are, are relatively low, the influent concentration has been elevated. Uh, that's um, just the result of low flow uh, toilets and that type of thing utilized. A uh, copy of the pump station flows for the month of September is included in your packet. We had a couple events uh, where the report uh, is showing zero flow. Uh, these were the results of some uh, malfunctioning hydro <coughs> ranges, and each event was detected by the, uh, the new skater. Um, no flow monitoring systems and alarms were sent out, and we were able to respond and, and correct those uh, malfunctions right away without any incident. Um, we continue to conduct uh, H2S or hydrogen sulfide monitoring at key locations within the collection system. And uh, the results for this month, I have uh, pump station 11, which is on Old County Road. Uh, we had an average concentration of 23 with a, a milligrams per liter with a peak of 120. At pump station 6, which is on Old Neck Road, we had an average concentration of zero with a peak of two. And at the... Uh, uh, fourth main terminus for pump station 7, which is the Higgins Beach uh, pump station, which terminates up by um, um, Camp Ketcha, that had an average concentration of 5 with a peak of 72. Uh, we have completed the installation of the two red line, um, uh, red valve check, inline check valves at the drop manhole of uh, Primrose and the, the the intent of these was to prevent the migration of H2S uh, up the, the collection system. Um, that manhole right there is a drop manhole where the 12-inch uh, gravity sewer coming down Pine Point drops about five feet and consequently is aerated and there's a lot of gas release there. Um, we have uh, completed some um, additional H2S monitoring that was uh, uh, just collected the other day. Uh, on Primrose, and the Primrose hydrogen sulfide concentrations in the collection system on, those, on that line actually came out at an average concentration of zero. So it's, uh, and it's being a very effective on uh, the Primrose line. Alternatively, on the 12-inch line coming down Pine Point, uh, it, it's the, the one-man hole upstream from the check valve still has a uh, fairly elevated uh, concentration, we'll be getting those results uh, tomorrow. Um, I've been working with seven providers to establish a, a budget for the re rehabilitation of manholes. Uh, the average cost is approximately 10000 per manhole. At these costs, there may be some instances where replacement may, may be the more cost-effective solution. Uh, we'll be evaluating each situation and utilize a the most cost of that solution for the situation. Um, and I'm anticipating we'll be doing five or six manholes next year. Uh, at the last trustees meeting, Ms. Strauss had uh, asked me about the epoxy coating that uh, was provided by Warren Environmental. 
uh, and it was installed on a, on a manhole uh, at the intersection of Fog Road and Black Point Road. And um, it, upon inspection and at the Grange Hall, it was also done. I looked at both locations, mm -hmm. and they seem to be holding up well um, with no adhesion failures. Uh, this product is actually one of the uh, manufacturers that we've been talking to. E.J. Prescott is the representative of, of it. Let's see. Um, pump station six quarterly sprinkler, sprinkler inspection. Uh, Simplex Grinnell completed the quarterly sprinkler inspection for pump station number six. The only thing noted was the need for the internal pipe inspection. Carl will be uh, doing this work and documenting his findings. Um, so we'll be completing that shortly. Uh, on October 4th, the on call operator received an odor complaint from the area of uh, pump station two. We responded and confirmed that the odor control system uh, was operating. Now, uh, for the people that are listening and in the audience, Pump Station 2 is the one at Easton Road, uh, Easton Road in Pine Point, down by your house. There. Um, he responded and confirmed that the odor control system was operating correctly and did an assessment of the odor in the area around the pump station. At that time, he could only detect and was not able to detect any sewer odor. I responded later that night and I came out um, and I also walked around <coughs> the area and um, I was unable to detect any odors at, at that night. Um, I did provide the email correspondence that I had with uh, one of the firemen that had uh, originally called in the complaint um, and uh, I included all that email in the packet. And then um, on 193 Pine Point Road, uh, on October 12th, I received an odor complaint from um, Mrs. Shoup of 193 Pine Point Road. I had a conversation with her about the source of the odors and the ongoing work to address the problem. On the phone, I speculated the problem may be the odors were venting from the vent pipe of her house. Uh, Glenn and I met with her the next day, which was Friday, and uh, we did smell the odor there. Uh, it was very evident that it was venting from the house. Uh, we both felt the source was was uh, the, the the vent. Uh, we we had uh, suggested an air emittance valve would address the immediate problem. And on Monday, I had dropped off two air emittance valves. Miss um, Shoup had requested an audience with the board. I know she's spoken with uh, Charlie a couple times um, since. Uh, this event, and I provided that email correspondence with uh, in the packet. Um, Follow-up information since the packet has been put together is that the air emittance valves, come to find out, are not a uh, an approved plumbing device. Uh, this was a process. This was a, a, a an item the district has been uh, handing out prior to uh, me coming on board as a superintendent. So it, they, they've been provided over for a period of time now. So um, I've been working with the town code officer on how to address this issue and, and the state fire marshal. And we'll be moving forward on sending out some documentation, some letters to the homeowners in the areas that have received those, that those probably should, they should be removed. So. Okay. Um, did you want to stop there? Chief? Yeah, I think that's a good place to pause um, so that we can um, not have folks in attendance here have to sit all night long and hear stuff they're really not interested in. Um, I, I think I'd just like to give a, a preview. Um, I gave a brief one um, to a couple of folks uh, prior to the meeting. Um, uh, we, we realize that um, there's an odor problem at uh, the pump station on Eastern Trail and um, Pine Point Road, and also that's what we call pump station number two and pump station number one, which is um, down close to Pine Point Beach. Um, and we have historically had periodic odor problems in that system. And the odor problems are a nuisance um, and offensive to folks who have to smell those. We understand that. But they also pose a problem for us with regard to the maintenance of our equipment. Um, the gas that gets uh, generated, which is causing that odor, um, 
is damaging to concrete and manhole structures uh, and any concrete pipe that we might have. Um, so we have a two-fold problem. One is, a, one is the public nuisance and the other is the jeopardy that it puts our equipment in. And so we are motivated to address that problem. Um, the first step that we took was to um, put in an ozone generating piece of equipment at the wet well at uh, pump station two at Easton Trail. And, and the purpose of that is to um, basically neutralize the odors that are generated from the wastewater in the, in the wet well. Um, that's just treating the symptom of the problem. That's not a cure for the problem. Um, I think last year's budget, we included uh, funding in that budget for us to solve the problem um, at the source, which would be the, the wet well at the pump station, at pump station one at Pine Point. And uh, our plan is to uh, install equipment there that will inject liquid oxygen into the, the water, so we'll super oxygenate the water. It will prevent the um, oxygen depletion from happening there, and that will forestall the creation of this offensive smelling gas and this damaging hydrogen sulfide gas. So um, that's something that's been in the works for us. Um, what's happened this summer is that the problem has been exacerbated by changes in the waste loading from the Pine Point area to the Pine Point pump station, which makes the oxygen depletion more severe and, and quicker. So um, our plan was originally to have the system installed by the beginning of next summer so that um, when conditions arose again where folks opened their windows and water temperatures rose and oxygen, oxygen depletion became more of a problem um, and the gas generation would be more severe, that we would have this system in place. But in the meantime, you've all been experiencing problems with the gas venting in your neighborhoods through the vent stacks on homes. And, um, and so um, we are going to accelerate the process for the installation of this equipment, which can't be done immediately because the equipment is under design and has to be custom built before it can be installed. And if I make a mistake here, you correct me factually, okay? Um, so um, as soon as we are able to have the equipment delivered by the vendors, we'll schedule its installation and move ahead with that as, as fast uh, as fast as we can. Um, Actually, there is a little bit of a clarification. Uh, some of this equipment, knowing the long lead time that it had, I actually have pre-purchased it. And I do have the, um, the, the major pieces of the equipment on, on site at the, treat not at the treatment plant, not at the pump station. Uh, that we're doing, we have to complete some um, engineering work in order how to put the parts and pieces together. Um, but I wanted, to, I wanted to get ahead of it, and knowing what we needed for equipment, I ordered the equipment and I've, I've already bought and paid for it, so it's ready to go as soon as we, as soon as we get the engineering done and um, we'll, in, we'll install it. Thanks, Steve. So, um, so that's, that's a quick uh, summary for you of, of where we're at. Um, at our last meeting, Dave reported that um, that he thought that the problem had been cured 80 percent. That was, the context of that was a discussion of the uh, ozone equipment treating the uh, odor at pump station two on Easton Trail. Um, it was not intended for folks to read that and think there the problem solved and, and, and that was all that, uh, that, that, that was going to be done. So um, we, we've been committed to solving the problem uh, we didn't anticipate that it was going to become as problematic for the residents in the neighborhoods. 
Um, and uh, we're optimistic that between getting this equipment installed and also working with uh, um, businesses at Pine Point that are uh, producing high strength waste, um, that we can also deal with them to make sure that uh, they are discharging waste that our systems will accommodate. And if their concentrations of um, um, waste are too high, then they'll have to install their own pretreatment system so that, <coughs> so that this problem doesn't continually become, you know, an aggravation for the district and for and for the residents. We also had a uh, malfunction of the um, the new odor control piece of equipment at the Eastern Trail down on Pine Point, where the um, everything's run by computers these days. The motherboard for the unit just failed and we had to get a new one shipped out to us and so during that period of time there was about a week and a half period of time that the system at, at the Eastern Trail wasn't wasn't working at all so you know there was an uptick in the order at that that immediate vicinity right then and there so. um, and then the other thing that David touched on earlier in his presentation was the installation of the check valves uh, in the drop man hole at, um, at, at Primrose. And the, uh, the function of those which have been installed is to stop the migration of gas up into that gravity sewer line. So the way the sewer lines work, when water flows, air is displaced and the air has to go somewhere. And that's what the vent stacks on all of your homes are for, is to, is to vent the air and release the pressures from this gravity system out to the atmosphere. That's the way sewer systems have been designed and function in, in, the, uh, in the modern era. I guess you can, go to, you can go to any community in the country or in the world that has a gravity sewer system and you're going to find these types of vents everywhere throughout the system. So it's not unique to our system, it's the way things work and if the water is going to flow it has to be vented. That's just, that's just the way the physics, so the uh, hydro, um, uh, the hydrology. Hydraulic. 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 hydraulics work. So, um, so there's nothing unique or problematic uh, with the design of the system. Um, the thing that's unique for us is the amount of force mains that we have. Um, because Scarborough is a very spread out community, we only have one treatment plant. We have to pump wastewater for miles to get it from the source to the, to the treatment plant. And during that time, the oxygen gets depleted on it. So periodically we'll have some odor problems that we have to deal with. So we are familiar with them and we are dealing with them and we're going to do our best to solve the problem. And the board was fully supportive of the initiatives to implement the correction, corrective systems here and we just all got caught in the middle of the process with a surprise this summer. So with that, um, I, I have a couple things. Yes. Um, uh, just out of coincidence, uh, tomorrow our inspector from the EP uh, has, is coming out to do his uh, quarterly or biannual, I forget how frequently he comes out. And uh, we've, I've had conversations with him about the odor issues down in the Pine Point area. And um, so I'm, I'm bringing him out to show him, to, to expose him to the problem, show him what we're doing, you know, um, what we've done, what we're doing, and what we plan on doing to address the issue. Um, one of the things I, I do want to comment on, I do, I do feel the two technologies that we chose, the one to base the problem down at the Eastern, Eastern Trail and the, the, the technology to stop the production of the hydrogen sulfide, the uh, super oxygenation technology, <coughs> those are two of the uh, um, the premier type of uh, treatment processes that are available um, out there. And I, 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 you know, I, re I really did a lot of research on what's available out there and what would be the best solution for the, for the, uh, the town. 
And so um, I, you know, I'm, I'm very confident that the uh, system will, you know, will get better. Um, I've already had a lot of people um, express interest in what we are doing in, and seeing uh, because uh, it's unique to this area. Um, it's something that's used more down in the warmer climates uh, because of uh, higher activity of biology. And so, um, you know, I, I'm very confident that this stuff will work. We have not cheaped out the approach to address this issue. If, if anything, we're on the other end of the, the scale of, of, of uh, the equipment that we have purchased. Thanks, Steve. So with that, um, I'll open the floor for folks. If, they w if anybody is here who wants to address the board, come to the podium and uh, just state your name and then state your piece. Good evening. Uh, my name is Philip Reed, and I live on uh, East Grand Avenue. And uh, I probably drive by the uh, sewer plant there, you know, maybe three or four times a day. And I just wanted to make the point that at times it is extremely gaseous. Two or three hundred feet away, driving in the car, uh, you could be hit with odors that would basically knock your socks off. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not an occurrence every day, or it wasn't an occurrence every day, but at times it is extreme. I just wanted to make that point. And my second point is I spent a good portion of today uh, studying wastewater treatment, and everything that you guys have said seems to be spot on. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, um, I'm April Bailey. I'm just uh, speaking for the restaurant and for Bailey's Ice Cream. And um, <clears throat> it's hard for us, because I know it's residents, I know it must be horrible, but it, it, it's like horrible for us also because the customers will walk up and they'll look at the different kinds of ice cream and, and they're just <laughs> they're looking around like, what what is that? And you know they're looking at us, and it, and it's hard because you, we don't, I don't have an answer to, to to tell them, so I know I know exactly what they're thinking, that there's something going on on the site or whatever, and <clears throat> we have a lot of people sitting out at the picnic tables at the restaurant and the ice cream, and you can just see it on heavy days because it's been real bad the last month, and on heavy days people are getting back in their cars and leaving, and and I just wanted to state that because. It's been going on for a while, but this last month has been really, really tough. And I've, I've never seen so many cars pull out of there ever. So I just wanted to mm -hmm. state that yeah. and let everybody know okay. it's safe. It's not you. Huh? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Hillary McClure, and I live at Three Iris Drive. Um, I'm glad you knew that we were coming. This wasn't intended to be an ambush. Um, so I, I definitely echo what Philip said and that what, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name, Amy said, um, as we live in close, close proximity to Bailey's, we definitely understand, but from a residential perspective, um, it sounds like the approach that you're taking and what you're saying Charles is definitely aligned with how we're feeling and, and I think that we, you know, I speak on behalf of all my neighbors and we, we thank you for acknowledging that because I think the point of contention for us has been um, our, our complaints, if you're to call them that, or, or feedback, if we're putting it in a more positive perspective, um, has sort of felt for probably until over the past month like it's fallen on deaf ears, um, whether that be um, the expression of it being from our own homes through that vent, um, or you know maybe it's just the marsh smell. Like those 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 condescensions have been frustrating for us. Um, so it's definitely nice to hear that that you acknowledge the problem. There still does seem to be a discrepancy to me between acknowledging the problem but then stating that the the I think I don't remember the scientific language you used, but saying that it, it came back average or, or you know, normal, that the smell emitted from the pipe at pump station too. Um, 
because if you stand next to it, like if I'm walking my dogs, I mean, it's, it's terrible. It's billowing out. It's like in your face and it's hot. And it's not just the sewage per se that's terrible, but it's also whatever is whatever chemicals are used to mitigate that smell are strong as well. And those can be so strong in the right environment. Say I, was, I had a, f a really early flight, it was 3, 3 a.m. on July 19th, um, and I brought my dogs outside. And where I am on three hours drive, I'm kind of like diagonally across from the pumping station. Um, but it was so strong that it actually stung my eyes. And so that compi like, compiled with being told, well, it's probably your own stack that you're smelling it from, or you know, you need to get the studer vent, or what have you. That's been really frustrating for all of us. And I think for my neighbor Bob, it's especially frustrating because he's one primrose, so he's like the neighbor of the pumping station. Um, so we wanted to come here tonight to speak with you civilly because we, we didn't realize that this was a venue we could have this conversation at until quite recently. Um, and, and state our concerns, although it does seem like you are on top of things. Um, but I think this is almost therapeutic for a lot of us because sure. we've wanted to express these and we've been trying, but it seemed like we got kind of tossed around or we didn't really know exactly who to go to or, or what have you. So just the, the combination of the, the smell and feeling like our concerns weren't taken seriously um, some folks have lived here longer than others. I moved in in 2013, and I don't think the smell was a problem until maybe the summer of 2015, if I'm recounting correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't as strong. It's definitely like Amy was saying, it's been just horrid the past, I would say, two to three months. Um, but, you know, it's also gotten to a place where you can't, your quality of life is diminished. So I understand the quantitative showing you know, everything's normal and, and, you know, this is typical for, you know, the municipality and things like that, but the qualitative on that is, well, you, you can stand next to the pipe, you can smell it, it's there, it's real. I don't know if it's not reading on whatever, me like, type of mach uh, machinery you're using or, or what have you, but the reality for us is we can't have our, you know, we can't be in our backyards, we have children, and there has to be some kind of respiratory ramifications for inhaling that, those kinds of um, sulfurs and what have you. Um, that, that's definitely something that's legitimate. I don't know all of the science behind that either, but um, you know, we can't have our windows open. I think it was one night in late August where I kind of, I, I was at my wit's end because I had spent, I was on a staycation and I had cleaned my whole house and I had my windows open. It was a beautiful summer night. And I went downstairs and it smelled like trash. Like my whole house smelled like trash. And I couldn't find, I couldn't figure out what it was. Mm -hmm. And it was just the air outside. And it wasn't my stack. It was the pumping station for sure. And when the wind is right, it's terrible. But when the, you know, when the wind is going the other way, we can't smell it as much. Um, but it seems like it's more and more of a problem. So I think that it's um, just being able to express that to you, but then also the implications of that are such where I've been having conversations with my husband, like, should we just sell our house? But then also, like, can we? Because I don't know what day out of the week we can have someone come view our house mm -hmm. and it's not going to smell. And we moved here for a reason. We pay taxes here for a reason. And so that quality of life is diminished. And that's something that I know we all feel very strongly about and we wanted to express <coughs> to you. But then the other thing is that um, what I'm hearing tonight and what I read in the minutes from September is that well, we went to the neighborhoods and we didn't smell it. And I guess for us, I mean, I personally am happy to, and I don't mean this in a condescending way at all, um, but we could let you know when it smells really bad if you wanted to experience that. Mm -hmm. Like, one of us would gladly reach out and be like, hey, like, if you need to measure it to be able to have some kind of proof um, to support what you're trying to do, like, we could work with you on that and say, hey, tonight's a really bad night. Come down, check it out. Like, promise you that it's worth your time to, you know, log this or what have you. Um, so I wanted to throw that out there as well because we're not coming here just to complain. We're also coming here to provide a solution and, and solve this together because we all live here, we're all invested in this community, and um, we all care. So that was what I had to say. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, just to respond to that uh, quickly, it would probably be a good idea to maybe set up a communication link 
with David so that somebody could sort of be in touch with him on behalf of the neighborhood so that everybody didn't have to wonder whether somebody made a call or didn't make a call or are we aware of it. So if there is a problem um, with odor, I'm sure David would want to know about it. And, and I, I do respond to each one call. I mean, I, uh, I forget which night it was, but I think it was uh, October uh, um, the 4th. I was, out, I was walking up and down your street at 10 o'clock at night um, talking to some Canadian that was camping on Easton Trail. <laughs> um, so um, I'm, I respond to every, everyone, and I go, I go down there. Every every time, and I I go down there all the time, actually, even without without complaints. And I don't, if I smell it, I smell it. I, I'm not, you know, um, I, I know I was over your house that time we were talking, and initially there was no odor, and all of a sudden I definitely smelled it, and I'm not going to deny it when I smell it. <coughs> and we we certainly are trying to address it. Um, and I know that gentleman was correct about driving down. Pine Point Road and, and coming upon the Eastern Trail Pump Station, you know, it has been rank at some times, and, and it, 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 it's bad. Um, you know, and, and we want to get that solved. Great. Anyone else? Good evening. My name is Jim Demers. I live at uh, 184 Pine Point Road. Um, Mr. Chairman, you, you said something earlier about uh, the Studer vent valve, or Mr. Superintendent. You had said that that turns out it wasn't a, it's it's not in code uh, to have that placed on our house. And uh, David, I really appreciate you dropping those off to me that day uh, because we had we've lived at our house since 2010, and um, I can't tell you the you know you, you had mentioned, Mr. Chairman, that it's a, it's a nuisance to you know, to us, the the offensive odors. But I'll, I'll take it a, a step further. It's definitely a health hazard. Um, you know, my wife Wendy, on numerous occasions, has what you know woken up in the middle of the night with sweats, vomiting. Um, you know, in our house in particular, I don't know if it's because of our position on Pine Point Road, but um, every single night we smell it, and not as bad since we've got the Studer vent on our house. Uh, but we personally installed them on our neighbors' houses. Uh, to try to eliminate it, but um, at our house we smell it every day, um, and it it has not let up at all. Um, you know, this afternoon I was at the corner of Hillside Ave outside Blue Point School to pick up my son at the bus stop. We smelled it terrible. It was ridiculous. Um, you know, living in a vacation community as well, I can just imagine the effects that it has on tourism for all the businesses up and down Pine Point Road, um, and. You know, if there's something that can be d done to expedite, you know, the, the ozone treatment that you're doing and the air rating uh, that you're doing, we'd, we'd really appreciate it because, you know, Hillary had mentioned um, potentially selling her house. There's also legal implications that she'd have to disclose that this is a problem. And no one's going to buy our houses with this problem being disclosed on any real estate form. Um, so this is a monetary impact to us as well. Uh, but most importantly, uh, we want it just taken care of. You know, we, we pay substantial taxes. Um, we moved to this area for a reason. And, you know, our quality of life is certainly impacted tremendously. So I appreciate your time this evening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alan Stone. I live at 157 Pine Point Road. Um, I've smelt this for probably a year and a half or so, I guess. Um, I talked with Dave a few weeks ago at my house. He mentioned putting in the check valves. Since that time, it's only got worse, the smell, every day. Um, I'm up fairly early every morning at 4 a.m. when I go fishing. Um, definitely can smell it every day, especially when the, when the air is calm. You mentioned that the EPA is going to come out tomorrow and check. It's probably not the best day to come where the wind's going to blow 35 miles an hour. They won't smell it. Um, yeah, it's not the EPA. It's the main, main DEP. Okay. Well, EPA's, whoever it is, they EPA's won't smell it. EPA is a federal it. agency. They'll probably come anyway because 
he's going to be in Scarborough doing another inspection of our treatment plant. Okay. And but, so we'll take him down there and show him what's what's just, what. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, I just and, wanted to point out he, that he can return. Uh, yeah. that the wind's blowing 35 miles an hour tomorrow. They won't smell it. Right. But we're not going to cancel his visit. So. Okay. But and um. So yeah. So I mean, basically that's it. And it just um. I think if it was in any of your neighborhoods, it would be unacceptable. If it was my boat that was broke and I couldn't get it fixed within a year and a half, that would be unacceptable. I just think there's more that this town can do. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bonnie Klukey. I live at 8 Iris Drive. And I've lived in my home for 29 years. So uh, when we first moved here, we had um, certainly expressed our concerns to the sanitation department, and we were told, well, it's, it's low tide. Um, but what's happened is that this problem has gotten worse and worse. So I think what my concern is, it's not only a nuisance in regards to um, or a concern about the market, you know, our, our, the value of our property, but I heard someone say, you know, you're concerned about the erosion of, of the equipment, and I wonder, you know, what this does to affect our health, because it is something that, and again, I'm glad that you're addressing it, and we're all, you know, we all seem to be on the same page about trying to, I hope, resolve it, not abate the issue, but to resolve what, you know, what's occurring, because it is important. You know, we're all paying taxes to live here, you know, the way Maine, you know, life should be here in Maine. Um, but there is certainly much more to be done to resolve the issue, and I believe that that can be done if, you know, if we work together. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Uh, if not, um, I, we appreciate um, you taking the time out of your schedules and your free time in the evening to, to come here, and we're apologetic that it was necessary uh, for you to do it. Um, we're committed to solving the problem, and we'll do so as quickly as we can. Um, once everything is implemented, I'm sure there's going to be a adjustment phase where quantities of uh, dials have to be dialed in, you know, feed rates established, et cetera, but we expect to have a rapid resolution of the problem once um, the equipment comes online, coupled with the longer term challenge for us of dealing with businesses that are discharging high strength wastes in the Pine Point area. Um, sometimes that can go really smoothly, sometimes, uh, sometimes it can be a battle uh, asking folks to spend their own money to uh, discharge wastes at strengths that our systems are able to, to deal with. But we're going to be pursuing that also, and uh, I think we're optimistic that we'll have a handle on the problem and that the nuisance will pretty much be abated. I can tell you that you know you are living next to the hugest marsh in, I think, the United States, and I, I don't mean to equivocate on the odor issue, but there will be odors that are beyond our control because Mother Nature. Um, is doing a lot of the same decomposition, bioorganic de degradation in the marsh that's happening here. And so I'm not going to promise you that all the odors are going to go away and be gone. So I know they're different odors, but they're odors. And they're not all that much different because I've had, I've had, well, I understand. I'm not minimizing what's happening. I'm just telling you there will continue to be odors in the neighborhood. Some of them may be from us, and some of them may not be. Um, so, you know, kind of filter, kind of filter that initial reaction of there's that smell again when you get it, and just be just be realistic in um, in your assessment of it. I, I'm just asking you not to just levy every every different odor that that occurs on on the sewage treatment facilities because some of it will own, and some of it will be due to other sources. And we can't control the other sources. We can only we can only try and deal with you know the stuff that we're dealing with. So we're going to do our best to eliminate that, and uh, we'll see. You know, proof will be in the pudding, as they say. So we'll do our best to, to deal with it. And again, thanks thanks for coming, Mr. Chairman. 
Uh, not for my words to pass by any of you guys, by any means. I've only been on the board for about a year, um, but I can tell you since I've been on, uh, the superintendent and the board have been very cognizant of you guys' complaints. Um, and <clears throat> and you mentioned about you know fixing your boat and it taking some time. And even from that point, some of the parts and machinery that uh, superintendents had to purchase takes some time. And he was very uh, um, empathetic when he said that he pre-planned that, knowing that he had to do that, and that does take some time to build that equipment and, and purchase it. I live across the river from you guys, so I do not have to deal with your problem. And uh, one of the first things I heard when I was running for this seat was, are you going to solve this problem? And, and I didn't even know you guys had a problem. Um, but I can tell you that it's been something we've discussed every month. Um, it's something that we've been monitoring. And I know for a fact that the superintendent goes out all hours of the day and night to look at things. I encourage you guys to keep your communication with him, especially at the high times, because I know he and his crew makes every effort to go out and try to catch it when you guys have a peak complaint. Um, and this is the most audience I've seen since I've been here, so that's uh, also very exciting. Um, but we, we are taking it seriously, and they have been, and they've been very proactive trying to solve the problem. I do not want you to think that you, your words tonight have been in vain, and it's just been pacified. Um, they are two different odors, there's no question. Um, and there's a plan, they're certainly working on it, and it's been, it's been in the works, it just took a little more time. And, and I'm sorry that you have to live in the conditions you have to live in, but rest assured we will get to it, and hopefully, probably couldn't be any sooner than later for you guys. So we did hear you, and we have. I'm going to have to defer because I know some of the equipment's in that they want to impl implement and uh, some of it is still oncoming. So. Yeah, the, uh, my, my schedule is always to get it online by, you know, before the summer of next year. Uh, I'm going to do whatever I can to, to expedite that. Um, you know, it, it, it's not going to be before the first of the year, I can guarantee you that. Um, it's, uh, you know, some of the equipment that I've already purchased, it, you know, it was a six-month lead time on this equipment. Um, you're in the construction business, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, so that, that's, some of it's here, some of it isn't. So, and then we got to, uh, the engineering is actually going on at the same time. So, um, once the engineering is done, we'll actually start put, putting shovels in the ground and, and uh, uh, at least putting the pads in that, that's going to house the equipment and getting the piping connections done. Mm -hmm. And as soon as it's all here, we'll, uh, we'll plug it in. So you're thinking early 2018? Yes. So early 2018. Maybe you requested to remove the sewer zones before that happens? Uh, I think what you'll get is something from the code enforcement office, uh, the plumbing inspection department. There will probably be a, a letter that goes out advising folks that um, those valves aren't consistent with the uh, requirements of the state plumbing code and recommending that they be removed. I don't, th I don't know that there's going to be any kind of aggressive enforcement of that um, by the plumbing inspection department, but uh, I think that's something that the superintendent and the uh, plumbing inspector have had some discussions on and you, you should be receiving some notice from them. I don't know what he's going to say. It's not, it's not our department, so the plumbing inspector is going to do what the plumbing inspector feels like um, he has to do and uh, we'll all have to react to whatever that is. David, question for you. Mm -hmm. This, it's cyclical, the uh, H2S uh, production, right? It's worse during the summertime and months? Is it's that true? In, or it can depend upon the concentration of the waste oh. too? It, it, yeah, it, it, it tends to be, uh, well, it gets worse as the wastewater warms up. And the, wa the wastewater warms up as the summer progresses. And then, um, you know, we're probably right now at the point of the warmest wastewater that there is out there. And then we get a, um, uh, the, 
an effect that actually hurts us in that our flows drastically drop down at the Pine Point area. They, you know, I think we were flowing at 100, about 100,000 gallons per day from that area, um, and we're down to 60. Thousand gallons per day, so you end up with longer retention time in the in the force main, which is where the generation of the uh, odors are are occurring. Because we don't so flush out the force main. What's that? Yeah. We don't flush the force main out because we the don't residence time in the force yeah. main is longer. Yeah. Yeah. So. In the, the the treatment system that we're going to be putting in mm -hmm. down at pump station one is to help abate that. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, it, and it's actually a very good uh, system <coughs> for that situation because the the higher the pressure, the more oxygen you can dissolve into the wastewater, and that's a very one of our highest head stations. It's a pretty high hill, um, so um, yeah, it will be able to really uh, get the oxygen to it, and that will will solve the problem. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I have a question for the superintendent and a request for you, if I may. Sure. So the question for, for David, I noticed in the correspondence you have some emails back and forth with Andrew Fortunato, and you suspected that at the time what he may have been smelling was the ozone. Uh, so sometime early October you turned down the ozone a little bit. And I was curious if, especially with him, but even generally with the neighborhood, if there has been a change in the odor complaints since that ozone was reduced. Um, I have to ask them. I would no. Know. So okay. Okay. So that was like around October five. Nothing. So look, ozone, ozone, ozone is. It's a different kind of a. That's a real. That can kind of like tangle your nose. Yeah, ozone, like I. Ozone yeah. is a. Ozone is a form of oxygen. It's it's instead of O2, it's O3, <clears throat> and it has a distinctive smell. And the most mm -hmm. common time that you smell it is after a lightning strike. You smell that smell in the air after a lightning yeah. storm and the air feels really fresh and extra clean and that's because that is another way that ozone is produced and that's the most natural occurring I think way that the average human being experiences the, the scent of ozone so um, the ozone is basically going to be stripping the odors from the Gases are being vented from the wet well at pump at, at the pump station too, and so again there may be a balancing act there because I guess if it were me I'd rather smell ozone than sewage when I was walking by that facility and uh, so uh, you know if we can balance it so nobody smells anything that would be great but the flows change there all the time the cycling you know it's a mechanical system that switches on and off based on how much water folks run down the drain or how much uh, processing is going on at somebody's plant and we don't control that so our pumps our pumps read when the wet well is full they have to pump it down and so sometimes it'll sit there for a long time and other times especially at night everybody's in bed businesses are closed so there's not a lot of pumping activity going on so <clears throat> that could be good or that could be bad, depending on the nature of what's sitting in the wet well. Um, so we'll work to try and get that balanced out and minimize those odors. But, you know, to think that you'll be able to go by that pump station um, and not hear anything venting or smell anything from that vent is probably not really realistic in the, in the, in the scheme of things. But, but the really offensive odors that come from there should be dealt with. So, no, no, that's not. That's what what we're dealing with is a biological process that happens uh, based on the strength of the waste and the duration of the waste in the in the in the force main. So. Um, yes, you could dilute it. I don't think I don't think the fire department is going to is going to put a uh, is going to put a task force online to just flush water into our sewer system. 
We don't know. Well, that's that's part of the investigation that the superintendent is going to be doing. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. She 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 was asking about the whether the processors are using enough water in their systems. Yeah, yes. the strength Excellent. of the. And that was actually the second question I had. Is yep. uh, Ms. Kluke, is it? You said when you were at the podium that you'd really like us to talk about the solution. And Charlie, I think earlier in this conversation, you touched on high strength wastewater. Yep. Can you repeat what you have said about high strength wastewater and how that makes this problem worse and how the district would go about looking for that and getting rid of it? Because I think that that's really important to understanding why the odors may be worse now. Yep. Um, yeah, as I said, it's, we're really taking a three-pronged approach here. The ozone system at uh, pump station two is just to deal with the symptom of the problem. The oxygenation of the wastewater at pump station one is to try to deal with um, eliminating the generation of the gas, which would minimize the need for generating ozone at pump station two, and it would minimize the formation of gases that are being vented uh, back through the system. Um, the third part of that is dealing with dealing with um, businesses, um, processors of of fish or or other businesses that may be down there generating wastewater that we don't even know about. Um, that that would be generating high strength waste, which which by its nature then would consume a lot more oxygen. So it would more quickly deplete the oxygen and drive the production of the production of offensive gases. So uh, so we're we're gonna be hitting this on all three points and you know if we can come to a quick solution with regard to uh, processing businesses that are discharging wastewater, um, that would be great. But Sometimes that sometimes that takes a lot of time because folks have to then have uh, systems engineered to design to be installed at their places of business. They have to deal with the costs of financing those, and uh, you know it can drag out. So we we can't just wave a magic wand over a business um, and have a solution in place. We have to work with the with the owners of the businesses. Uh, in as cooperative a fashion as we can, and then we use we use a stick, you know, when we have to. But um, we'll have th that's going to take on a life of its own, and we'll continue to pursue that. But that's the third that's the third part of the of the problem, and we we are going to be pursuing that. The superintendent will be working with the businesses that we know uh, generating significant volumes of of water, and. He'll have to be inspecting there and asking them to have engineering studies done of their own waste streams and decide what what needs to happen. So it's it's not a one it's not a cookie cutter approach where you know one solution will fit business A uh, and then business B can use it because they have to re-engineer and restudy business B is a whole different situation. Are are we aware of uh, I mean eight hours drives. Ms. has been there for 29 years, but obviously the complaint, complaint got worse over the last year and a half. Are we aware of a major user or a change in the infrastructure in that time frame? Well, um, we think so. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and publicly identify people that may or may not be. That's fine. You know, but we think there yes, we, we, think, have we think there are. The we think there, we think there are um, at least one and maybe maybe more uh, businesses that have significantly changed their production operations. And Would it uh, be beneficial uh, then um, for the the neighborhood to communicate with the superintendent so we can identify peak flows or peak odor complaints so we can track those based on what we're doing with ozone and when we're doing pumping and try to calibrate at least on the uh, front side of it until we can get, because we know when, once we get the O2 in place. Well, it wouldn't do any, it would do no harm to know uh, when those but events, when those events are occurring. Yep. And even if, even, if, uh, even if the odor is dissipated by the time the superintendent arrives, at least we know the time frame when it was occurring and we can look at pump cycles and, 
and maybe reconcile that with water usages from different businesses and see whether that. I, I liked your thought goes. about having, uh, I think you kind of impl implied maybe a, a community representative, you know, to make sure there was communication coming forward, not assuming that somebody else already did it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that would be, be very beneficial for us tracking, you know, the pump flows, you know, versus usage and times of day and so on and so forth. That if either we could create a liaison or even if they all wanted to email, but some type of mechanism so we could track that to try to help the investigation process. I think that mm -hmm. might be Mr. Beneficial. Chairman, may I suggest maybe even even deploying a data logger over on Irish Drive Excellent. and that way just hang it on someone's front lawn or lamppost and that'll tell you exactly when the odors hit you. That's a great idea. Um, spoke too quickly. When you say a data logger, what exactly do you mean? Hydrogen sulfide. You know, yeah, like an area array. That you measure the manholes with I instead have of the manhole. But that's for, uh, for higher, higher concentrations. But, uh, uh, I, I, yeah, we can look into that. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be uh, the, a, a good way. So you take the um, timing, the subjective, potential subjective timing of when did I smell that, when did it start, when did it end, and it turns into a more scientific record. Well, if there's a meter like we use in hazmat, you can download it and get the peak flows, mm -hmm. and it's not subjective to an email. Mm -hmm. and we, have, we have one of those that's the, at, in the manhole, um, basically right across from your house right now. Um, and uh, that's for higher concentrations. The, the, the only thing I'd like to caution you on this is those meters are you know, good in the single digit milligrams per liter range and the human nose is picking up parts per billion. Um, the, you know, it's, it's just the technology that's available that's out there. Uh, the human nose is extremely sensitive. Um, True. Yep. So, you know, I'm, I'm gl I'll gladly do what you're suggesting. I'm, I'm anticipating it's going to show no, no, uh, no results, even though people are going to say, I smell an odor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Mr. Chairman, I think someone wants to speak. Yes. Can you please come to the podium so that thanks people at home can thank you the people at home. Hi, I'm Wendy Demers. Um, about the peak times, our experience seems to be nighttime when the temperature cools. Um, I can keep my windows open pretty much all day long, but once it starts to cool off, I have to shut my windows and I can never leave them open over overnight. Summer, fall, spring, it doesn't matter. The smell eventually comes in. Um, our, our house. Where, where do you live, ma'am? Uh, 184 Pine Point Road. Um, and we do have the Studer valves on, our neighbors have them on, but sometimes I think the odor can float from like the school or I know like uh, Bailey's Ice Cream, I don't know if they have, I don't think they have the valves, so it might even come up from them. But it was coming out of our own houses originally, and that's why we put um, the Studer valves on. And it, it did make a big difference, but um, somehow we're still getting the odor yeah you know, either from other houses that don't have them that are, are nearby, but nighttime's always a problem. And lately when I'm driving down Pine Point Road, if I'm approaching the pumping station, I shut my vents off, I put up my windows, and I try to keep the smell out. <laughs> um, and that is offensive any time of day. You know, it could be morning, it could be middle of the day. It's just, it's always blowing the odor um, towards Primrose. Mm -hmm. And I've always wondered why is it venting towards the neighborhood instead of like towards the marsh? <coughs> or why is the pumping station not in the middle of the marsh where it's not near any neighborhood? <laughs> like relocating it. Um, but yeah, I've always, I'd say overnight is for me the biggest offender. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Chairman, I did have a question. Uh, more for the residents, I hear the term year and a half. Has that been the time frame when these odors really got too bad to bear? Thank you. Hi, my name's Darren White. I'm April Bailey's fiance. I've been doing the, um, the maintenance around the restaurant and the ice cream shop for probably 10 years now. 
um, I think it was seven to eight years ago um, when Mr. Bailey took over for Beals Ice Cream. Uh, I think maybe a couple years later, um, we had that offensive smell. And it seemed to start behind Al's house and out behind the ice cream shop like, uh, like there was a dead animal or something out there that would be very offensive to the customers. And I was sent on mul multiple times on hiking trips out behind Al's house and <laughs> to see if something was out there that may have, you know, died. Um, and I've noticed, like, it slowly has moved down Pine Point Road from that area behind Al's house and, the, and that wooded area out there. And I've had multiple discussions with my father-in-law about what may be causing it or this or that. And it has always got brushed off as a runoff from the old dump that's buried under the ball field. Was there a, was there a dump out there? Mm -hmm. So we were on this conclusion that the runoff from the dump that was buried out there is slowly sleeping, seeping through the neighborhood and coming out and spilling out into the marsh. And because seven years ago, I never smelt it on Pine Point Road. Um, you know, seven years ago, it was out behind the ice cream shop towards the ball field area. And then it slowly has now, over the last couple of years, you know, ruined these people's homes. And I've asked my father-in-law, I was like, I can't imagine having a $400,000 house or a $300,000 house and having to smell that. I, you know, and, and it slowly started at the area behind up by the ball field and worked its way down Pine Point Road too. So now when you come down Pine Point Road and I go multiple times, dozens of trips a day, and it's slowly moved down Pine Point Road to where it's now coming out into the, into the end of the marsh. And my, my question was, was and, and you guys are the professionals as far as the sewer treatment and all that, that it's coming from the sewer treatment plant or this or that. What are the possibilities that it may be leaching from that dump through the neighborhood and finally poking its head out into the marsh like gravity takes place with the sewer water or rain water that would wash everything off? Because it did start up by, by, our, by the businesses and up and out on that upper side of that neighborhood. Um, and now it's down to the marsh side where it's unbearable. Yeah, we, you know, we really wouldn't have any expertise to offer on what the issue might be from the dump. That would be a municipal, that would be a, that would be a, town, a town of Scarborough problem. Not a town a, of Scarborough, okay, okay but it wouldn't have anything problem. to do with So that would but, be, that would be something to maybe ask the DEP representative. Or maybe introduce to him as a fact. Of yeah, no, that I think I think the place I think no. the place I'd start would be um, with with the public works department of the town, and they and they could walk the perimeter of, the, of the town property and look to see whether if there's leachate um, migrating off site, it's usually pretty obvious. It's a very orangey, iron, iron laden, water. iron laden yeah. stream. But it was of just water. My, my observation over the last. 10, 10 to yeah. 11 years because I've been sent out. Yeah, and it, and, and it seems kind of more and more seems kind of incongruous with a with a sewer problem for that kind of a description of, of yeah. the evolution of the of where of it the, started and where it's headed. Yeah, and I don't know, you know, if it was maybe if the sewer lines on that back road, I don't know where that where their sewer is pumped, whether it's pumped back up to route back up to Pine Point and then down. Or you know if there, maybe there was an issue on that back side. Yeah, I mean I don't know whether field. you know I don't know whether there would be any venting from uh, from the Bailey's campground. Um, no, no, uh, where facilities there. Uh, no, it's Bailey's uh, Bailey's restaurant and Bailey's ice cream. Yeah, right behind these folks. Yeah, old uh, Blue Point Road. Yeah. yeah, the old Blue Point Road. Right. So it's like in in that A yeah. A section right there. Yeah. And I'm not sure, um, but I don't know if maybe somebody could look into that also. To see if that was part of it. Yeah, we can it, we can I we can pass that it. on to the town. Okay. Uh, that's not something that we have any jurisdiction over. Okay. So, but we certainly communicate frequently with the town okay. officials. But I don't so know if can, it might save you guys some headaches to investigate that because you, everybody's chasing down the sanitary district yeah. where it may be a, a, an underlying issue. Yeah. With we, the, uh, we still, with the we still have the odor issue at the pump station. With that, that also. Needs to, needs to yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're dealing yeah, with our... Most definitely, definitely. Most definitely. Yeah, we'll deal with our issue, but, but we will, through the superintendent, we will, we will contact um, uh, the Public Works Department 
and just, look uh, and just ask little. them to do some investigation and see, maybe what, one of the see what they can come up with. Part of it and maybe yeah. may contribute. I mean, no municipality wants to hear they have an old dump site that they have to remediate <laughs> because you know that's, oh, most definitely, you know, that's, that's, that's millions horizons. and millions of dollars. But um, but it's something that we'll ask them as, we'll yeah, ask them to look into. I mean, if it's a problem, it's a problem and it has to be dealt with. But um, know, most definitely, but they, you know, if you add up all the people that have homes. In sure, that area, absolutely. That's millions and millions of dollars also yeah. and up and rising. But yeah. but I thank you so much for listening yeah. for absolutely. a moment. Thank Thanks you. for your input. Appreciate that. Mr. Chairman, one quick thing. Just a point of clarification because I've heard it several times. A lot of folks typically uh, link the sanitary district with the town of Scarborough. We are separate entities. So you know, as trustees, we are elected town officials, but they are two separate entities. So. Uh, I know uh, a lot of times people tend to think, you know, oh, they're just passing the buck to the town. That's not the case at all. We we don't have jurisdiction over things like that. So uh, just point of clarification there. So what the sanitary district is is a special district created by the voters of the town of Scarborough back in the late 60s to uh, to provide for a mechanism to construct, own, and operate a wastewater treatment facility to serve the needs of the town. And it was to deal primarily with failing septic systems on a town-wide basis on the, on, on the ocean side of the turnpike and ended up, uh, ended up under a consent decree that, with uh, the main DEP to build a town-wide sewer system to mitigate um, the impacts of hundreds or thousands of malfunctioning septic systems. And so the towns, in its wisdom, wanted to establish a separate entity that would operate outside the tax base of the town of Scarborough, be funded by user fees, and have the sole purpose of dealing with uh, wastewater collection treatment and disposal within the boundaries of the town of Scarborough. And so uh, the district was created um, um, by vote of the community and the governing factors that were part of the charter of the district were established at that point in time with seven elected trustees. Um, and, uh, and it's gone from a very small uh, primary treatment plant on Easton Road to a very sophisticated uh, two and a half million gallon a day facility um, off of, uh, Black Point Road in the Prout Snack area opposite Scarborough State Beach um, to handle all the needs of the town. And the, and the district does not do the planning for the town. So the town, for example, is doing another update for its comprehensive plan. We have to work with the town to um, try to accommodate the, the needs of the community for wastewater collection, treatment, and disposal capacity. So, for example, now the town is embarking on an update of its comprehensive plan, which is going to result in new growth scenarios that they're going to want to explore for the community. And our, our issues will be um, simply what kind of demands are they anticipating putting on the district, and how do we go about trying to accommodate those. Do we have the means to do that? Do we have the financial means? Do we have the, do we have the um, um, infrastructure, uh, infrastructure to, to do whatever it is that the town may see as the desirable outcome of whatever, whatever their planning process gets them to? So if they want to develop areas of uh, intense industrial development, then we have a whole bunch of issues we have to deal with um, with regard to the wastewater that's going to be generated, what the volumes will be, how they'll get to the district. Can we expand our treatment facility to accommodate the additional flows, and how is that going to be paid for? So while the town has the tax base to, um, while the town has the tax base to factor in its um, fiscal requirements, the district only has rates that folks pay. So our only source of revenue is for most of the things we have to do comes out of our, our rate structure and the monthly bills that, that people pay. 
So, um, so we're sensitive to that. Um, but that's the nature of how we do business, where we came from, and um, I think we have one of the uh, one of the best systems in New England here in the town of Scarborough, and uh, we get we get kudos from most of the regulated regulatory agencies that we deal with. Folks come to see our facilities and how we do business, so we're we're proud of what's been established um, at the district, and uh, and we'll take great pains to solve this problem because we just really don't want the black eye um, as trustees, and we don't want you to have to live with with the problem. So we can do the best we can do. That I guess I'd say thank you. I'm going to take a five-minute recess so folks can find their way out and uh, come back come back anytime. You're always welcome. And again, uh, we'll ask David to follow up and we'll try and establish some kind of a line of communication with uh, folks in the neighborhood who want to be on that. Well, um, I, think, uh, I, th I think emails are, are a pretty preferred form of communication. Um, Obviously, telephone calls work work great because I'm, I'm an anachronism. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it'll depend on. Yeah, I mean, we have on-call personnel, so it won't always be Dave who's responding. But uh, we need to work that out. Yeah, I mean, my email. I I never leave the office, so to speak. Um, you know, I, I respond to emails all the time. Um, I got an email from dispatch uh, the other night at 10, 10 p.m. and I responded to them. And um, you know, I may not see an email that comes in at two in the morning. I might it might be um, you know, the, the, in, later in the morning that I uh, that I see it. Um, but emails work great. I mean, you know, if it, there's something. If if there is something that you need to get a hold of me right away, the, the, uh, um, you can always call police dispatch, and they have our on-call pager number, and they have my direct number for my cell phone, and that's always on. So. Yeah. Okay. Were you looking to send to the trustees as well, or? Well, I mean, I just have a few questions there. I guess one, I don't want. I think our emails are on the on the website as well. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Look, look. Um, here's 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 what I want to avoid. Okay, I don't want individual trustees wandering around the community trying to respond to problems because David will have no idea what's been told, what the what the issue was, and we're going to have to rely on some communication filtering back to him. In the meantime, somebody may tell you something that may get dropped because they might not talk to Dave for a week. You know, they get caught up in their work or their daily routine because this is a part-time job for us, you know. Um, and so feel free to call a trustee if you have a policy issue or a question or if you don't think David is responding or if our, if our staff is not doing their jobs, you can, you can call a trustee and the trustees will discuss it. We're policy folks. But I, do, I just, I just want to insist that the line of communication goes through Dave. He'll, he'll copy us on any emails that he gets. He'll make sure that we're informed. You know, there's no secrets here. We don't try and hide problems. We try and solve problems. So um, he's going to bring those to us. He's, it's going to be at least at our monthly meetings, but usually we'll hear from him if an issue arises during the week. Um, He'll, he'll let us know, and he knows what are issues that we need to know about and issues that he doesn't. So make your communications through, uh, through Dave, through our on-call number, and through, and through dispatch, because that's their job. So whether it's a problem, they're there 24 hours a day, and whether they're sitting there 
taken fire calls or complaint from a citizen, they're going to pass it on to whoever, whoever the right person is to receive it. So I wouldn't want to, don't feel like you're encroaching on, if they're in another emergency, they'll say call back in 10 minutes, you know. So they'll, they'll deal with that. One, one last thing I want to uh, state is that, um, you know, this, you know, the district has recognized this as an issue. And I've been looking at, you know, uh, ways to solve the issue now for the better part of three years. Um, and I've heard loud and clear that it, this summer, for one reason <coughs> or another, it, it just seems to be a lot worse. Uh, so something has changed this summer, and it just got ahead of us. Um, the, you know, the, the trustees have supported by um, uh, evaluating the situation, looking at technologies, and purchasing the technologies as, as I have seen fit. So they, they are on board with solving this problem. I mean, Joe, when he first came on the board, when I, I think it was our first meeting, I mentioned the odors down at uh, and, um, Pine Point and some projects I had on the books in order to address this issue. And he says, I'm glad I'm hearing this because that was the first thing people had spoken to me about. I mean, the, the, the board is supporting the solution. And I think we've got the solution, and we just need some more time to get there. So. Right. Thanks again for coming. And we'll be in recess for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.
resulted in me uh, requiring its replacement. Uh, the issues include the sewer was shallow and had the potential of freezing. The original septic tank was left in place but had a hole within its top and had the potential of failing or collapsing. And there was a number of unnecessary bends in the line that restricted flows. Uh, the joints of the pipe weren't, uh, weren't gasketed or glued. And finally, there was also a broken clean-out uh, in which the dirt was falling into the service. So that has now been taken care of. And also I provided a letter t uh, to uh, Bessie Commons, which um, they're looking at a phase two, which is at 272 US Route 1. Hmm. This letter is to confirm that the Scarborough Sanitary District has the ability to collect and convey and treat wastewater from the proposed second phase of the Bessie Common Senior Housing. Um, the project consists of uh, 46 units of senior housing apartment building. The requested flow is for 9,200 gallons per day of typical sanitary wastewater. All 36 proposed units would be subject to the district's capacity reserves. Today. This is something that would uh, come in front of the board for approval. That's all I have for correspondence. Okay. Great. Really good. Questions? None? Okay. Um, old business. The residences at Gateway Commons, 259 Payne Road. On behalf of... Before you go, David, Mr. Chairman, I would like to uh, recuse myself from this item yep. since uh, my employer uh, is involved with this project. Okay. Thank you. On behalf of KGI Properties, LLC, Sebago, uh, LLC, Sebago Technics requests the Sanitary District Board of Trustees amend its approval for the proposed residence at Gateway Commons located off Payne Road and Haggis Parkway. At the last meeting, the trustees approved the 288-unit apartment complex consisting of 12 buildings, a clubhouse, and the irrigation maintenance building. The requested flow was for 59,350 gallons of typical sanitary wastewater. The owner would like to break the project into two phases. Currently, they are seeking approval for phase one and understand that they were required to return and request approval for phase two. <coughs> As part of phase one, the town has required all the utilities and roads be installed to the entire project. Uh, phase one would consist of construction of 240 apartment units and 10 residential buildings, the clubhouse and the maintenance building, and the mail pavilion, and 13 garage buildings. Based upon the previous discussion, the design flow for phase one is calculated to be 49,750 gallons per day in phase two, would consist of the construction of 48 apartment units in two buildings and one garage. And that design flow is calculated 9,600 gallons. The proposed sanitary system includes 2,966 feet of 8-inch gravity sewer, 23 manholes, 554 feet of 6-inch sewer service, 33 feet of 4-inch sewer service, and we utilize 520 feet of 8-inch gravity sewer and three manholes that were start installed as part of the original project. All the gravity sewer manholes and sewer services within the lot will remain privately owned. I recommend approval um, with, as noted, uh, the capacity reserve fee is calculated based on phase one only, consisting of the 240 residential units, clubhouse maintenance building. Capacity reserve fee is based on single family residential dwelling units plus additional flows to clubhouse. Any additional homes, apartments, dwelling units, accessory units, or flow in excess of this are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. This parcel was originally approved for a mixed use development, including offices, a hotel, and a child care facility with an approval of 22,495 gallons per day. And the capacity reserve fee associated with this flow was paid at that time. Thus, 27,255 gallons per day of the 49,750 gallons requested flow is subject to the district's capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is 1573 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Uh, based on the 1573 per gallon, the total capacity reserve fee due would be $428,721.15. Uh, the approved flow for, is for phase one only, consisting of the 240 residential dwelling units 
in 1750 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste from the clubhouse and maintenance building. Any flows in, in excess of the approved amount are subject to additional flows. I'm just going to pause here and just say I'll, I'll continue on through what, uh, my recommendations, but the remaining recommendations have not changed since the last approval. Um, the clubhouse and the maintenance building will, ha will have uh, privately owned water meters to measure water consumption at these two locations. These meters will be as required by the district submeter program. The district will use these measured flows to calculate usage at these two locations. Uh, CCTV inspections and installed sewers required at the completion of the project. The proposed project utilizes a private sewer system and shall remain private, and the operation and maintenance of the system shall be responsibility of the owner. The final plan shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval by the issue of <coughs> permits. Two extension permit is required and the application of the fee submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension. The sewer permit is required for each sewer service. A complete application of the fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no state sewer work shall be completed. And uh, professionally surveyed electronically georeferenced CAD drawings, stamped PDF to CAD drawings, and stamped paper copies be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. So I think we need a motion so to approve, which would include the rescinding of the approval at our last meeting of the entire of the project it's in entirety, and also note that phase two will require further action of approval by the board. Yes. I would agree. So moved with the conditions enumerated by the superintendent. Second. Second. Thank you, Joe. Question. Yes. Don't we usually, even for private lines, require um, marking tape or tracer wire? On, on gravity uh, systems, so you go on manhole to manhole, no. Okay. Other questions? Any questions? Yes. So these are apartments, not condos. Correct. So how does the metering go? Is it to the whole unit? Each building has its own unit, or no? no we're going to send one bill. They're going to be billed. They'll be billed based on the number of units. Uh, residential residential billing is flat fee per unit. Okay. And then the uh, the uh, other outbuildings that they use, the maintenance buildings, um, will have meters, and they'll be based on and they'll be charged based on metered flow. Okay. All right. Thanks. All those in favor of the motion? Six in favor, none opposed, one abstention. Mr. McSorley. Okay. Uh, new business, 108 Mussy Road. On behalf of uh, 108 Muzzy LLC, DM Roma Consulting Engineers, request the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustee approve of a change in use of 108 Muzzy Road. The project consists of a proposed 3,000 square foot commercial office showroom with a workshop, the existing four bedroom dwelling unit that is currently on the property will be demolished and the existing six inch, six -inch sewer will be reused. The proposed building is expected to have a maximum daily use of 120 gallons per day, based on four gallons per hundred foot. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The, uh, this lot is within the eight corners sewer district with a flow allocation for one single family dwelling unit, which is 160 gallons per day. Thus, no capacity reserve fee will be due for the proposed use. The lot is approved for 160 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Any flows in excess of the approved amounts or characteristics are subject to additional approvals. Final plan shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permit. Sewer permit is required for each sewer service. Complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. And then professionally surveyed, electronic data reference CAD drawings, a stamped PDF for CAD drawing, and a stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Mr. Chairman, motion to approve with the conditions enumerated by the superintendent. Clear a second? Second. Second by Jason. 
All right. Any questions? Comments? Yeah. So you say each uh, sewer service permit is required for each sewer service? I, I, I was uh, trying to find it. Uh, is there more than one? You know what? Um, no, no, I like get it. Typo. Okay. One, one sewer service. For the sewer service. The service. And uh, oh, I, just one more question. Uh, we we able to use the existing line. Is, is that going to be checked before? Or yeah, whenever we uh, demo a line or abandon a line, uh, my policy is that it gets exposed, and we have a push camera that we use <coughs> to the line from from the property out to the sewer main. I have a question. Yeah. Would that be a, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Rob. Uh, I noticed this uh, line goes right under stormwater area. How deep is this line, David? 12 feet. I don't know off the top of my head. I can check for you. Uh, do we know when it was put in? It would have been put in um, back when uh, that uh, um, eight corners project was done, which was 1987. 87? Yeah. It was only, what, 30 years ago? Yeah. I don't think I'm that old. 30 years? Clay pipe? No, it's PVC. It's PVC? Yeah. The good good stuff or the bad stuff? <laughs> well, it's still hanging together, well, no, so it must be the good stuff. Um, I, I just, I have concern with putting sanitary facilities underneath the stormwater system. I don't know what the design of this, whether it has a liner or whatnot. Um, I don't know. Or is, or is that just a ditch? It's just a culvert, right? Look at the right plan. There's a foundation drain that comes out. Uh, it might be the again. existing ditch. Hopefully it's deep enough. Existing. And hopefully, you know, yeah, yeah. your your inspection of it shows that it's tight. You know? Yeah, um, we'll confirm the conditions of the of, of the sewer, but if there is any... Um, Do it on a rainy day. Yeah. If, it, if there is any concern or issues that is discovered, it's going to have to be uh, uh, addressed before they can use it. Yeah, because the condition is or replaced, correct? Mm-hmm. And that has happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the thing. <coughs> Good. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? None opposed. All right. Next item B is the budget summary. The nine month budget summary is including a packet and I recommend approval. So moved. Very good. Moved and seconded. Um, we're tracking very well. Looks like we're going to finish in the black, which is a good thing. So we'll knock on wood that the superintendent can continue to continue to uh, bring us in on the budget for the next two months and uh, see what happens. So looks forward. good. <laughs> All those in favor of approval of the monthly budget report? All in favor, none opposed. Public comments have already been received earlier in the meeting. Trustee comments. Nick. Um, just a few. First, I want to thank all the neighbors that came by to speak with us about the Fine Point area. Uh, Bailey's ice cream makes a good ice cream. I um, want to congratulate uh, Carl and Paul for a successful installation of the fog ro rod and the mixer and I also want to put a plug in for the Oak Hill players we're going to be doing singing in the rain for the next couple weekends <laughs> please find time to go see a show are they, are they performing tonight yeah no they <laughs> start on <laughs> yeah. November singing in the thunderstorm okay the second um, that's a good point they might have been able to do it right outside <laughs> good point <laughs> um, anyway that's it thank you thank you Aubrey Again, kudos to staff for all the good work that they do. Um, glad that the district supported Glenn going to West Tech. It's an excellent event, especially the Chicago show. 
a lot of good stuff to be learned there. And congrats to Dave for being asked to present two Jetsy classes. That's an honor. Um, and I know that I'm always asking you to go to Maine Water Environment Association things because you're very knowledgeable and you have a very good teaching style. So I think that that reflects, again, very strongly on this district and, and our superintendent. Um, so thanks to all of you. Thank you. Ben? I would like to thank Dave uh, for following up with the people down at Pine Point and, and the people that showed up tonight. And I, I like Bailey's ice cream as well. Me too. And, uh, <laughs> and thank you very much. And that's, that's it. Go. I'd also like to echo Audrey's comments as well as uh, <clears throat> Glenn being able to go out to uh, Chicago. I look forward to hearing that at the uh, trustees, uh, or the, excuse me, the employee appreciation dinner. I'm sure it was a great time. And I uh, look forward to hearing about your teaching up at the state. Um, and I'm empathetic very much to the, uh, the comments we've been hearing for a while now from the membership from the Pine Point area. And just uh, know that this, this board and definitely the district is well in tune to it. Um, and despite all that, I do, can, do appreciate uh, all the workers for all, all that they continue to do. Thank you. Rob. Uh, to echo the sentiments of my fellow trustees about our, our great staff uh, and uh, all the work that they do, uh, David and his proactive approach at dealing with the, this issue, uh, unfortunately, probably not a lot of people know what's been in the works for a while, uh, but I think we're going to get on top of it. Thank you for uh, spearheading that. Um, I also echo... Uh, purchase many tickets for singing in the rain uh, and support our local uh, young artistic people and uh, lastly I want to congratulate the new grandparents Mr. Ben and Margaret by uh, uh, they have a brand new grandson what's what's the name again Ben Salvatore Anthony Mancini congratulations <laughs> congratulations. congratulations and you're going to call him Sam. Jason, uh, my congrats to Ben as well. I didn't realize that. Congratulations, Ben. Uh, also, want to thank the staff, as always, doing a fantastic job down there. Thank the residents of Pine Point that came out tonight and uh, had a word with us. It was it was great to, uh, to hear their concerns and be able to hopefully address their problems. Um, also, want to congratulate all the fall sports teams. I know there's some playoff uh, bids going on right now and hopefully some state championships in Scarborough's future. So congrats to all of them and good luck in the upcoming playoffs and championships. Great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I think everybody's covered my comments uh, in spades, <laughs> so I won't, I won't reiterate them, but I do appreciate the good job that the staff continues to do. Uh, also, I'd like to remind folks to turn out and vote on uh, November 7th. I think that's election day, don't mm -hmm. we get Vote on Election Day, whatever the date is. I think it's the seventh. And uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? None opposed. We are adjourned. I'm still broken, right? Nine fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Republicans, Democrats, going to go on the seventh. Republicans going to vote on the seventh.